hi guys welcome back to my channel once again this is bat up with Ola. my name is mujela lua today i want us to address the elephant in the room and by that i mean the mass exodus of uh you know people you know from nigeria to other countries and more particularly as pertains to this uh episode and discussion i want us to talk about the mass exodus of young lawyers you know to other countries especially for educational purposes now educational purposes would seem uh to be the credible reason why many are going but we all know that you know there are so many other sub reasons if i may put it that way that inform this exodus if you observe you would notice that these days most of our top tier law firms are now advertising roles mid-level roles especially you know asking for lawyers between four to five years experience and thereabouts you know on a rolling basis what would that tell us are these positions vacant and if yes why could it be because you know most of their mid-level associates are leaving nigeria for greener pastures i know that most people leave for education to get an llm or a phd but we all know that not everyone that leaves comes back or ask the intention of coming back so let's address this issue once and for all first i'd like to talk about the reasons that uh, inform this decision to leave then i'll talk about uh, what you should consider if you are a young lawyer or a law student preparing you know to uh, also go abroad for your masters or phd and i'll talk about what you should consider if a young lawyer also trying to leave the country for educational purposes, whatever your real reason might be. Then I'll talk about how I come in and what I do at House of Living Stones to help people who are, you know, in this stage or phase of life. So I'd say that uh, I believe that, you know, an average Nigerian law student or young lawyer has considered at some point in time leaving the country for greener pastures. And the reason that comes easily to most people, most of us, is for educational purposes. So you think, okay, let me go. Maybe I do a one-year master's or a two-year master's. And then after that, I'll get a PhD or I'll get a job or I'll just not come back. I'll find some other valid reason to stay away. I know that we don't put that in our personal statements and our application documents. But that is usually the thought in the heart of uh, most people. Matter of fact, I've worked with a client once. Stella candidate, you know, she had stellar grades from our uh, university in Nigeria and she wanted to leave and we had to, you know, work a personal essay towards, you know, uh, a specialization. Then I asked her and she told me that her real reason was she just wanted to get out of Nigeria. She just wanted to get out of Nigeria. Matter of fact, she wasn't even considering funding because there was funding for her. She, you know, funding was not a problem. She just needed that admission to get out of the country. I don't know if you are like her today, but I hope that, you know, as I speak, you might find some value in what I'm about to say. So what are the reasons uh, that push, what are some of the reasons pushing people, pushing young lawyers, pushing fresh graduates of law and mid-level career associates to leave law firms and law practice in Nigeria for greener pastures abroad? One is remuneration. You all know how poor the remuneration is around here. I have a friend that I referred for a job that I found, you know, in court uh, last week. She went for the interview and she came back telling me that they offered to pay her 30,000 Naira. This is someone that is almost con concluding a master's degree in Nigeria who was called to the bar, you know, a couple of years ago and who has, you know, the level of practice that should attract more pay. But the law firm was offering her 30,000 naira. I'm not going to go into the politics of oh, how much is the law firm earning or making, can they afford to pay or whatnot. But what I'm saying is that when you keep being hit by, you know, things like this, offers such as this, you know, leaving the country, you know, for good even at some point becomes, you know, a very, very favorable and, you know, viable idea to you. So poor pay. We're all here around two years ago. I made a video on it, one of my earliest videos on this channel, when an Abuja lawyer told us how his principal paid him 5,000 Naira per month, a lawyer that's been called to the bar. We're not going to talk about how to make back your law school fees and whatnot, but I know that you need at least 1 million Naira successfully get through law school as at today as at today and that's even 
That's be modest if I say one millionaire because I know 300,000 is already your school fees. Don't talk about your clothing, your feeding, your transport to and through law school, wherever it is they post you to, and so many other expenses. So if we put it, and not to even talk about your screening fees, your wig and gown, call to buy expenses, if we put everything at one million naira, how many months will it take for an average Nigerian lawyer, young lawyer now, to make that money back? Let's assume that you took a loan of one million naira and you said, okay, I'll make this back, I'll repay it in installments or what have you. How long will it take you on a salary of 5,000 or, 3, or 30,000 naira to make that money back? Considering the fact that you still have to buy clothes, you still have to buy colorets and bib, you have to appear neat and you still have to pay your practicing fee, probably branch dues and all sort of, you know, bills, bills, bills upon bills. So, um... The remuneration terrain is not so favorable for young lawyers in Nigeria. That's one reason why people are leaving. Another reason why people are leaving is a career prospect. We all know that, you know, anything imported, anything foreign is, uh, you know, what we celebrate here in Nigeria most times. So it's easier when you come back and say, oh, I have an LLM from Cambridge or I have a PhD from Stanford, you know, people think or believe or there's a general perception that it gives you, you know, more credibility and it gives you a leverage you know in the career market in nigeria so that might be another reason why people are leaving so that they can have that credibility that status you know that leverage you know to probably come back and negotiate higher fees or get a better role or you know just to be uh socially perceived in a better light so that's another reason why people may be leaving you know for greener pastures especially for uh educational purposes Another reason might be because people actually want to live and live for good. So I know that in our personal statements and application documents, most people say, oh, I have this dream. I want to come and solve this problem in Nigeria and I need to get this degree, this qualification, this training for me to come back and be useful. But in the real sense of it, most people want to live. BBC did a documentary around uh late last year where they spoke a share where they beamed the light on so many nigerian students in foreign countries who are amassing degree upon degree and taking even very very demeaning roles and jobs just so that they can stay legal in the country where they have moved to because they do not want to come back to nigeria they don't want to come back voluntarily they don't want to be deported so they are amassing degree upon degree degree upon degree masters you know and what have you so that's another reason people actually want to live for good that's one of the reasons why people are living for educational purposes another reason is um that um you know people are uncertain about the future and honestly that is what the what the nigerian society presents to an average young lawyer in nigeria there's so much uncertainty you don't know when you, you cannot even plan because you're not certain that you know your plan will come to fruition you take a brief today and it takes 10 15 years you know before you even get to judgment you don't know how, how when you're going to get the number of judgments that you need for a certain role or a certain position you don't know how profitable you know your employment uh, or your briefs will be for certain because you know you take this brief you charge them this amount of money and you get to court the registrar and so many other stakeholders are asking for their cuts their share at the end of the day you're left with practically nothing so it's so uncertain the uncertainty is just so pervasive and i'm not saying that moving to another country now you know offers that certainty but people just feel that let me just leave you know once i leave when i get over there i'll figure out the rest and um, the most uh, credible and easy and legal way by which people are living law students and lawyers are living is by the educational track and that's why i want to talk about it today there are so many other reasons you know that can be put forward as why people are living you know poor toxic work environment you know you get to there are people that have spoken about this on social media how they work with principals you know lawyers as well principals who you know put them through very toxic you know uh, working conditions there are so many other reasons that we can put forward as to why people are leaving the country in droves for llms for masters um for phd sjd or lld you know that's what they call ours in law so many reasons why people are leaving to get these things 
that are not essentially for the purpose of education. But for the purpose of this session, we'll just call it educational purposes. So that's why most people are leaving. So if you want to leave by the educational track as well, I want us to discuss. Leave me comments in the comment section. Mail me at houseoflivingstones at gmail.com. Let us discuss at length what you should do, what you should be considering. And now as I speak, I'm speaking as uh, someone that has worked with uh, applicants into graduate studies, you know, since 2018. I've worked on so many applications. I've worked with so many candidates, helping them to uh, work their documents uh, up to the standard of the Graduate Admissions Committee. And that's uh, the insight that I want to share with you today. Still offer this service at House of Living Stones and it's paid for. It's not free, it's paid for. But uh, let's talk about this today. And if you'd like to contact me for further uh, information or for my services as a document reviewer and for your application support you can mail me at house of living stones at gmail.com but what are the things that you should consider before you decide to up and leave nigeria for good or temporarily going by the educational track the first is that you should consider the country you're going to uh, what type of country is it is it a country that's favorable to nigerians are you welcome in that country are you sure you're not going to be going through excessive racism or any form of toxicity in behavior and in reception, you know, you need to consider that. Then you need to look at uh, what kind of country is it? Is it a country that allows you to stay back? That if, if your goal is to stay back and not come back, is it the country that allows you to stay back? And for how long do you have the hope of becoming a permanent resident or a citizen of that country? Or have you passed the age already? If it's a country that allows you to stay for a little bit, how, how long is it? You know, I know that there are countries that allow you to stay for two years, you know, after your studies. So you need to look at all those things so that they won't deport you when you're not ready to come back, if your plan is to come back. And so that if your plan is to stay back, you will be able to put things in place that, okay, after my LLM, I'll get an SJD or an LLD, and then I'll get a job and I'll do this, I'll do that. So you need to put things in perspective. What kind of country is it? Can you, you know, pinpoint, even if you don't know them personally, people maybe that you've met or seen online who have moved from Nigeria to that country and have been successful in the track that you're going into. So you just need to look at it. Do I have any precedence, you know, of people in my line of work, in my career, having gone to this country to pursue these reasons that I'm going for and who have been successful at it? So you need to look at that. Then you need to look at the school that you're going into. What kind of school are you going to? What's uh, their admis admission rate, you know, for Nigerians or for people of other countries and other races? You need to look at that. You need to look at, uh, do you have chances of success in this school? And um, can you proceed if you wanted to get another degree or if you wanted to get employed? You need to look at their alumni body. You need to look at the success rate. What are their testimonials? Some of these things are usually on the school's website. You need to look at, okay, what are my job prospects, you know, having come from this school, having gone through this program in this country, what are my job prospects? Usually they put it that, oh, our alumni have gone on to become president, they've gone on to become, you know, uh, public defenders, they've gone on to become, you know, uh, economists, you know, working with the United Nations, with ECOWAS, and so on and so forth. So you need to look at all those things. What are your prospects as regarding the school that you're going into? And uh, if you're going for a research-based course, you need to look at, do they have, you know, the uh, lecturers, the supervisors on, on hand to supervise you? That's another thing. And then you need to look at the course you're going for. Are you going for a general LLM or a specialized LLM? You know that our uh, curriculum in Nigeria is quite general. So if you're going for further degree abroad, you need to look at, do I want to specialize now or do I still want to go for a general LLM? Then you need to look at, is it funded? That's, that's if you need funding. Is it funded? Is it partial funding? Is it full funding? Is it school funded or is it like a general, you know, funding like the Commonwealth or Shivening? You know, you need to look at all those things. And then you need to look at, okay, this course, what are my prospects? If I were to come back to Nigeria, how useful would this course be for me? my career track you know you need to draw like a plan if i come back what am i going to use this degree for and if i stay over will i be able to migrate maybe into the workforce or into another degree another program with this course that i've chosen so you need to look at all those things how uh how uh varied or how um 
how diverse is uh, the class or the classes that uh, the school has every year? Do they take Nigerians? Do they take people of other races? Uh, what are the classes of people that they take? Is it mid-level career people or young fresh graduates? Or are they government workers, you know, uh, NGO uh, workers, you know, all manner of things. You need to look at all these things, the school, the country and the course. So when you have made a decision, then it's time for you to start your application. Now you need the following documents for your application. You need your personal statement or your personal essay. Then you need, you need your CV or resume. Then you need your um, reference letters, two or three, usually. Then you need your uh, research statement. Now that will depend on if you're doing a research-based course or a taught or a taught course. So LLMs usually now are uh, usually either research-based or taught. So if you are doing a research-based course, you might need to do a research proposal or a research statement, which is usually like a one pager or max two pages, you know. For the school based on the school's requirements then you need your international passport so if you do not have one you better go ahead and start processing one you know the bureaucracies that are involved in getting one in nigeria so you need your international passport and sometimes you might need uh, a language test score that's ielts or toefl uh, usually for lawyers there are ways around it sometimes some schools accept your wasi results you know if you have a stellar grade in English language, some schools accept a proficiency letter from your university showing that you have been taught in English, you know, in your first degree. And sometimes you could write an application for a waiver and you could request for an English language interview, you know, instead of a test score by the school. The school would interview you just to be sure. So you could, uh, there are ways to go around having a language test score, but if the school will not waive it under any conditions, they would have stated it on the website. So you would need your test score. You need to take a test, you know, that. And then uh, you might also need GRE, depending on the course you're going into, you know, you might need a GRE. Don't say that because you are in uh, you are in the law track, you know, there are some courses. For, for instance, if you're a lawyer going into public policy in the U.S., you might need a GRE test score. So um, look at all those things. You will find these requirements on the school's website after you might have decided the school you want to go to. So when you look at all these things, you need to get them ready. And of course, you need your application fee. You can ask for waivers, you know, in some schools, but you would still need to look at the school's website and make your findings to be sure that it's a school that will waive it for you or that would not waive it for you. So you need all those things. And after you might have gotten all these things ready, you can make your application. Now, you need to also consider, are you going to come back to a job in Nigeria? Do you have a job? For instance, if you're living a law firm, is your role promised that, oh, go, come back, we'll keep this role for you? Or if you're working in an organization or a government establishment, can you take study leave and go and come back? So you need to look at that. And if not, if you're going to be losing your job outright, what's your plan if you're coming back? Are you planning to come back and start your own law firm? You know, that's always a viable option. I always encourage people, young lawyers, you can start your own law firm. You just need to take all the risk. And you just need to be, uh, you know, come courageous. And you just need to be courageous about it. It's not rocket science. Something that you can do. Or do you plan to come back and work with a government establishment or an NGO? You know, depending on why you're going for your master's degree. There are people who are going who have like a defined purpose. Okay, I want to contribute my quota to uh, the power problem, to so solving the power problem in Nigeria. So I'm going to do this course at Harvard. You know maybe an llm in environmental law or something of the sort you know so that when i come back i'm going to join uh, the nigerian power regulatory organization whatever it is they call them and i'm going to start working with them and implementing what i've learned and the training that i've received so you need to look at that too and then you need to look at the prospects when you come back is this organization an organization that will recruit you or could you work uh, independently for a while and then become a consultant to them or are you going to come back and be job hunting like a normal Nigerian lawyer looking to join a law firm? I know that this is also a viable option because now you have an LLM, which most top tier law firms even ask now that, oh, an LLM is an added advantage. So you need to look at that. Will you come back and job hunt normally? 
if yes it could be a good option for you you might even get a better job with better pay you know because of your llm degree which is now even a foreign llm degree you know based on our nigerian preferences which we cannot all deny so those are things that uh, you should look at and of course you would have a uh, you know probably stronger bargaining powers you know to negotiate better pay based on your llm also you now need to consider the fact that are there firms or you know companies or organizations you'd like to work with who would not want to employ you because you've been out of the working space for a while you know i know people who from their llb went into a bill and then an llm maybe worked for a few then went into an llm and then into a phd now if you're not going into academia what's the likelihood of you getting you know employed you know there are people who prefer people who have been actively working, you know, not just someone that's been amassing degree upon degree. So you need to look at all these things, okay? So what I do at House of Living Stones is that I help people who have decided their country, their school, and their course. I help them prepare their application documents up to the standard of the admission committee. Now, when I say that, I'm not saying that I'm going to create fictitious documents for you all do all the work for you. I'm just saying for people who know what they are doing but need professional help and guide, I am the go-to person. So I would you give me drafts of your documents and then I'll review them. We'll work on them together, partner with you, give you all the necessary support information and guidance and uh, editing and reviewing, you know, services that you need to make stellar documents that would, you know, win the favor and the positive decision from the admissions committee. I've done this since 2018 and I have candidates that have got into Harvard, Fordham, you know, success, Queen Mary University, Cardiff, you know, University of Illinois, University of Ottawa, you know, so many New York University, that's NYU and University of Arizona, you know, and, you know, other universities. So, and some have gotten in with funding. Some have gotten in with funding. So very important. It's depending on what you want me to do for you or help you with at House of Living Stones. But essentially, the service is for, it's paid, and it's for people who already figured out what they want to do. You've chosen your school, your country, your course, but now you need the support, you know, to get you into the school with the desired funding. I'm the go-to person, so you can always email me at houseoflivingstones at gmail.com. And I'll put a caveat and say that you can always get these things done if you do adequate research for yourself. If you go on YouTube, for instance, there are so many free resources, even from people who have been on admission committees at one time or the other, showing you how to do these things. There are free resources and resource persons on YouTube, on Twitter, you know, people just telling you and showing you how to do this and how to do that. So if your dream is to leave the country for greener pastures, education-wise, it's a valid dream and you can get the resources free or paid but if you prefer a paid service where i will literally hold your hand and guide you once you've decided where you want to go to and you have rough drafts of all documents required i am here for you so you can mail me and we can get started at house of living stones at gmail.com so eventually i hope and pray that all our dreams will come true whether we go there or we stay here whatever we do as young lawyers, I really wish us success and I really wish and hope that the Nigerian terrain begins to smile on young lawyers, you know, going forward. That's all I have for you in this video. I will see you in my very next video. Toodles.